Good morning and welcome to worship on this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. In this time of worldwide crisis, when it is not safe for the church to gather for worship as the body of Christ in person, we gather now to hear the word of God and to hold each other in prayer. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in the unity of spirit by their teaching that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise to the Lord a shout with psalms. For you are a great God, you are great above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to your voice. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The first lesson is a reading from the book of Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We respond to the first lesson with a portion of Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. 
they are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler, and the Holy One of Israel is our King. The second lesson is a reading from the book of Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin which leads to death, or of obedience which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have now become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were freed in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The welcome of baptism is for all of God's children. The gift of baptism sets us free from the power of sin and death. And in a world that makes our baptismal covenant challenging to live, Today we hear Jesus promise that whoever gives a cup of cold water to the little ones serves Jesus himself. And we are reminded that we too are sent out to serve those little ones, those who are in need, those who are vulnerable to the powers of sin, empire, and pandemic. Through baptism, we are a sign of God's merciful welcome for all of the world. I had a recent conversation with someone who said that it feels like we are living in a dystopian novel. Our sin-sick world has moved the unimaginable into the reality of our daily lives. We live in a society in which people live wretched, dehumanized, and fearful lives the things dystopias are characterized by. These times, these stories, they often feature tyrannical governments, environmental disaster, or other cataclysmic 
declines in society like a pandemic. And as people and planet are destroyed, the political and the powerful, they shore up their positions and use propaganda to distract us and to place blame, to build hatred and fuel fear. Mad egoism, ducking responsibility, telling the people what they want to hear rule the day. If the people can be convinced or imagine that everything is going to be all right, that what you're seeing, what you're really hearing and experiencing is not what you think it is, then magically everything will remain the same. Will remain calm. Be calm. Leaders like the great and powerful Oz tell the people, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, to the truth that you see, that you hear, that you experience. And even when we know that that curtain has been pulled back, the truth revealed, and the state of falsehood, great suffering and injustice all around, the political and the powerful continue to distract and redirect. What does God's word have to say to all of this? Well, in our Hebrew scripture, we hear only a small part of a much larger story in Jeremiah, a story sometimes called the dueling prophets. The story begins with God commanding Jeremiah to proclaim to the people of Judah that God is about to bring an end to the kingdom of David and the temple in Jerusalem, life as they knew it, and that this would happen through the king of Babylon, whose armies are even now, as we hear this story, advancing upon the city. To make the point, Jeremiah is told to wear an ox yoke over his shoulders, showing that it is God who brings the yoke of bondage. And to resist Babylon is to resist God. Now the verses before today's story start in Jerusalem, where the prophet Hananiah is rallying the people, telling them exactly what they want to hear. Don't worry, it will work out just like it always has. This too will come to pass. The Lord will come and rescue Jerusalem. All of this will go away and we will be safe and we will return. We will return to the way of life we knew and all of the treasures that will have been taken will have been brought back. Everything will return to the way that it was before. And Hananiah says, do I hear an amen? And the people rally, and in the midst of the people shouting, amen, shouts the prophet Jeremiah from this cheering crowd. And the people, they turn and they see Jeremiah wearing his yoke and shouting, I hope you're right, Hananiah. I hope everything that you say comes true. Nothing would make me happier than to be dead wrong about everything I have seen and said and heard from God. But this is so much bigger than you and me, so much larger than our opinions about life. This is much more important than who is right and who is wrong. You see, the question here is, what is the word of the Lord for us this day? What is the word of the Lord for us this day? Don't forget, Hananiah, there have been prophets before you and me, and not all of them prophesied salvation. Some foretold of disaster and destruction. You remember Elijah, Amos, and Micah, who once prophesied that this very city would be laid bare as a mown field. Time will tell what the word of the Lord is, who proclaimed it, and who received it faithfully. Beloved, the question for us today is not what one's opinion is, which cable or newspapers to believe, or even which political candidate. It is what is the word of the Lord for us this 
day. What is the word of the Lord for us this day? And as we move from the challenge of the prophet, we are reminded by Paul, who is writing to another dystopian empire in decline, that sin is an enslaving power which motivates us to live lives turned in on ourselves, to live disobediently, and sin's final payoff is death. We, however, have been set free. Set free from sin slavery to live obediently under God's grace, whose end is the free gift of eternal life. But as we struggle to live during these extraordinary times, the word we want to hear is one of quick salvation and solution. Take off your masks open everything up, go back to life as it was in January and early February. What is the word of the Lord for us today is all well and good, but masked, socially distanced lives are wretched. Black lives and the virus vulnerable are being dehumanized, and the political and powerful spew and fuel fear. Amidst it all, we long for the unattainable. We yearn deep in our being for a time that, that no longer exists and for a place that we can never fully return. The Welsh have a word for this. Hiraeth, Hiraeth, H-I-R-A-E-T-H, Hiraeth. I hope I pronounce that well. This word is used when one's soul is longing to come home and to be safe. And this was the concern for Judah during the Babylonian captivity. This was the concern for the early followers of Jesus in the Roman Empire and for many of us today. And Jesus gets this. He understands this feeling as he prepares the disciples for his death and for a time when they too will long and yearn for what was and for the very physical presence of Jesus that they cannot return to in the ways that they want. Jesus teaches them and us that all who give a cup of cold water to the little ones serve Jesus himself, water, life. It refreshes, sustains, washes, and claims us as God's own. One attempt to describe this Welsh word, here I, in English, says that it is a longing, a longing to be where your spirit lives, longing to be where your spirit lives. How is your soul? How is your spirit this day? And what does the word of God have for you? Now the place where your spirit feels most at home may be a physical location that you can return to at any time. Or it may be a more nostalgic home, not attached to a place, but a feeling or a time from the past that you can only return to by revisiting old memories. Sitting physically in church on a Sunday morning instead of on your couch. Beloveds, your spirit's home is neither exclusively in heaven above or the one from which you are now separated from. But it is wherever, wherever you find yourself, where Jesus gives you and calls you to share in the time and place you are the cool and refreshing waters of grace and forgiveness. Beloveds, 
You were sanctified. You were, fancy church word for, made holy. You were claimed and made holy in those baptismal waters. You are not holy because you are good, but because you are loved. And you are loved, not because any of us deserve it, but because you are of God, part of the body of Christ. Now go, go splash in and share that holy and life-giving water. May it be so. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Although distant from each other, we are called to join together to pray for our needy world. In response to each bid, you are invited to offer your own prayers, silently or out loud. And we will conclude each petition with the words, Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for the Church of Jesus Christ around the world. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for our own congregation and for its leadership. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for the health of the earth, its lands, its seas, its animals. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for those who work in our fields and produce our food. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for peace between and within nations. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for President Trump, the Congress, and the Supreme Court. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for a right observance of the 4th of July. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for those who are oppressed enslaved or poverty-stricken. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for an end to racism.
Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for both protesters and the police. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for all who are sick. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for all who are sick or sorrowing from the coronavirus. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for medical workers and researchers. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us pray for families facing an unprecedented summertime. Hear us, O God, our light and our shield. Your mercy is great. Let us thank God for Bishop Arrhenius, the apostles Peter, Paul, and Thomas, and all those who have died in the faith. And let us pray that at our end, we will join them in God's presence. Receive our praise, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, the Holy One, you are yourself the cup of cold water we crave, relieving our deep thirst. Receive these prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, for your mercy is great now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There's a long-standing practice in the Episcopal Church to offer a means for people to receive Holy Communion spiritually when it cannot be received physically. I invite you to pray with me. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ, I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen prayer for these times. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may seek truth boldly and love deeply within your heart. May God bless you with holy anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may tirelessly work for justice, freedom, and peace among all people. May God bless you with a gift of tears to shed with those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and the loss of all that they cherish, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and transform their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in this world so that you are able with God's grace to do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God, the supreme majesty of our creator, Jesus Christ, the incarnate word who is our savior and the Holy Spirit, our advocate and guide be with you, remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Send forth your spirit, O God, and renew the face of the earth. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. And thank you for all who have continued to support the work of all saints during this time. You may make contributions by mail using your financial institution's automated check writing service or securely giving online at wolfsaints.com slash donate. Please join us for coffee hour via Zoom at 10 o'clock. Links are in this week's e-news or the connection calendar that was mailed to your home. If you need the link, please message us. God be with you till we meet again. <laughs>